Hey, y'all. Good afternoon, morning, nighttime, wherever you are listening to this, whenever you're listening to this. This is an episode where Bo and I are chatting through the number one most asked, always coming up in a DM, always in the comment question ever since we began living in a shed to house. Gosh, what is it? Four years ago now? Four years, right? We're in the official fifth year now. So we built this shed to house. It's like 800 square feet. It's on raw land, meaning no one else was here before us. So everything from the fencing that we've put up for our animals to clearing the property just to put the house on it was done by us, funded by us, and organized by us. And that's what we want to talk about today is how much did it cost, right? So if you guys are jumping on, you've got questions right here in the chat, please let us know. Put it in caps so that we can answer them while we're on live with you today. Uh, We are switching things up a little bit better together, Homestead, and we're going to try doing things during the day with you because quite frankly, we've got an infant who is teething and we've got big kids who are growing and it feels like the nighttime is when everybody wants to talk and everybody needs you. So we're gonna give you guys our attention during the day and I hope that it's something where we can connect with you and moving forward, give you this great opportunity where it feels like we're building community even through long distances. So thanks for being here today. Uh, We've got a couple of things that I wanna point out. The first is where you can get all the information that we're talking about today. So if you're listening, On this replay, you guys can still go down to the description below and you can get this link. If you're listening live, you can grab it right here in the chat. So one of the one of the ways that we get to connect with you guys via email is by sharing our information with you. So we have listed this report on our website and gotten, I don't know, hundreds thousands of downloads. I think it's like twenty something like over twenty thousand. So thousands and thousands of people who are at least curious in this. And I think that YouTube is really cool for peeling back the curtain and learning things that you wouldn't normally learn about. And that is what this conversation about how much did our shed to house cost comes down to. So you can download this and have this right at your fingertips. Um, Go to the link in the chat or like I said, on the replay, check out the description below. And this covers everything that it took for us to break ground on our property, to uh, put in all the details in our house, like all the plumbing and electricity. We're also going to go over um, putting down the house pad and then putting the house on top. How much did the house itself cost? I know so many people are DIYers, but we did a a very big mismatch of both. So some of it is... uh, work that we did ourselves. And some of it is work that we just hired out because quite frankly, we didn't want to take the time to do it and do it wrong and then have to take the time to do it right. So if that's any of you in this camp, all the way DIYers, or you have no skills at DIY and you want to hire it out, we'll cover all those bases while we chat through the cost of our shed to house today. Uh, I want to jump in and then in a couple minutes share some really great I think like specifics on how you can actually get this on your property or get it so that you can be building it and then set it on a property. So let's get right into it. Um, There are always questions of like, first, how do I find raw land? Hold on real quick. Mm. May I first interrupt you? Because we got to be able to give a shout out where we're all, I'm going to give one more link here because this live stream is brought to you by United Portable Buildings. This is... Were you? What, am I jumping ahead? Mm-hmm. Okay, then never mind. So sometimes your husband Kelly's will say, "Crushing it." Sometimes your husband will say, "Hey, let's do a live, and I want you to run it." And what he means is, "Let's do the uh, live. You run it, but when I feel like it's not going the way I want it to, I'm going to jump in and steer you in the other direction." I thought you forgot. You <laughs> did it. You're crushing forget. it. I'm on this. Keep it up. That's why we do this during the day because my mom brain, like many of you moms who are listening, is gone at nighttime. This is when you say it's 730 and nice mom is going to bed. And if you guys want to stay up, then you get mean mom. And she's she's been in the closet all day long, but she's going to come out. So welcome to the show. You get nice mom. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> Continue. Okay, so I want to break this up into how what we did first, and then um, 
move on to obviously like second and third, but I'll take a little break in there because I think after you get a picture of like what the like foundation is not the word that I want to use because that's like a building term. But like once you get the baseline, then a lot of the other stuff is extra. Um, so I'm going to give you the baseline and then I'm going to show you where you can go to learn more about how you can build a shed to house yourself. And then um, you can jump back and forth through the links below. Or if you're watching live, we're going to give these to you as we go along. So the first thing, obviously, is that we had the property. People ask, I wish I could just publish like our top 10 questions. Maybe I should do that, like a frequently asked questions. Uh, it is how much did it cost? Also, how do I find raw land? Um, we won't go over that today because we've got a lot in the pipe for you guys to get your hands on more information like so that you can start searching for yourself at home. It's not a like a mystifying thing. It's not a secret. It's kind of like searching for a house, but you really need to be looking in the right direction to find land that has been unused or untapped. It's usually cheaper than buying land with a house on it, um, but there's also extra costs. And that's what we're jumping into right now. So we bought the land in 2015. It's seven and a half acres, a smidge more than that. And then um, we did not build for another three years. And possibly because our family was just getting an order and deciding, oh, like, do we really want to do this thing? Do we really want to like muck cow poop and live away from a Costco? Like, I don't know how I feel about that. I was ready to move <laughs> in. I, I wanted to live in a tent. Come on. Yeah. If you're listening to the podcast, you can go back to, to hearing about like what almost ruined our marriage. <laughs> That was getting to the homestead. Uh, spoiler alert, you cannot convince people to homestead. So when we bought the property, we thought this would be like a place we could go camping. Um, and eventually we could build on. It just wasn't necessarily our, our heart's desire to homestead. And since then, a lot has changed in the world. A lot's changed in our hearts. And when we went to move from the Houston suburbs to this homestead in central Texas, we took um, a pretty direct route. Like we knew we were gonna put a shed to house on here. So we're, we're detailing these builds based on our knowing that this property had no water, had no electricity, had no house on it. We could put a house on it where we wanted. And most of our property is wooded. So there's some extra costs that'll go into that. This is not a formula. This is something you put on your vision board and you'll say, I like this idea. What does it look like for me? Okay. So when the property was here, all we were doing when we camped was we uh, had a, a kind of a driveway up in so that we could get onto the property. It had like a little climb that our minivan was just not going to do. So first we put in a driveway. But once we were actually here and we'd moved, we'd sold our house, these are the, the things that we did first and the very big costs for it. So we have not rehearsed this. You're going to get my very <laughs> real and raw commentary to Bo on like, holy cow, how much did that cost? May I quickly yes. uh, interrupt? So the reason why we were coming up with ideas and we're like, hey, I I want Kelly to be able to do this because... yeah. And there, I've done several presentations in, in, in person about how we built the shed house because it's a lot of people are interested in it. And so this, these are numbers that I've gone through. Yes. And I like, I've, I calculated all the, I came up and with I all the numbers. There. Of course. I was there. For no, it. Of we course. approved these together. No, of course. Of course. But Kelly, I don't know, <laughs> has seen this spreadsheet and you just can go if you want to follow along, uh, bettertogetherhomestead.com uh, slash report. report. You can go follow all along with us. But this is the first time that Kelly's actually like looked at the <laughs> spreadsheet in years or ever. Probably years. Probably years since we were like detailing these out. Yeah. So septic was important to us. This is a keep or lose. Some people don't need septic. Um, this was actually the one thing on all of our property that had to have a permit. So people will tell you get a perk test and all of these things. This is just us sharing the type of septic that we got and the amount that it costs. So um, you have aerobic and anaerobic septics, and we went with? Uh, conventional. A conventional, because we have thick like, clay soil. So you're saying an aerobic or anaerobic. I guess it, uh, I yeah, think it's, I, think, I, th I don't think it's both of those. I think it's, I think it's aerobic or it's conventional. Uh, anaerobic is whatever it goes things go rancid and bad and so you don't want that for anything i don't know that that's right so maybe this is not the place to start 
Either way, here's <laughs> let me describe what it is to you, and then put it down you, the chat. Uh, I was going to say some of are. you guys know what the word is for this, and again, we have not visited this in a minute. So this is the type of septic we have. There's a big tank, and then it seeps into a septic field. My parents have a septic where there's a big tank. And then they shoot it up in their sprinkler. And we're like, don't go outside when it smells like rotten eggs. Yeah. It never smells like rotten eggs on our property because the septic is doing its job. So we have dense soil, uh, clay soil, and then we have like a sandy top. So this is the perfect type of septic for ours. You guys, this septic was $7,200 estimated. We walked out the door with seventy six hundred, so seven thousand six hundred ten dollars on septic. Y'all, we haven't even we didn't live here yet. And I don't even know if the house was here yet. Maybe the house was it just was. here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so septic, right? Um, then we had electric to the house. We are very thankful for best friends of ours who are one of them is a master electrician. So it was like, hey, this is brilliant. Let's get him in here. And he was so generous with his time and even his like knowledge that he shared. He's just a great teacher. So he came. The and, studio that we're in right now, we call it the the Carrie house. So yes. We get because that's John, Michael and Carrie saved the day. So we actually got our electric run from our electric. um pole to the house. This is in the video where Bo is like heaving these gigantic um, cables. Uh, it's probably about 500 feet from the, maybe less than that, from our electric pole at the front of the house underground to our home. That means they trenched that part by hand with a trencher and then they ran, um, I think they ran uh, kind of like a, a pipe where they could then send the cable through from the pole, which is at the front of our property near nearest to the street, all the way to our home. And then we ran the rough electric off of that. So this is just getting it to the house. Um, that should have been about $5,000. And because we had a friend who helped us and DIY'd it, it was $979.11. So big savings there. However, this is something if we didn't have a pro helping us, we would not have done this ourselves. So that's just super transparent. We know lots of people who DIY their electric and their plumbing because they don't have to have permits for that in their county. And ours is the same. We didn't have to have permits for that, but it was something that we were just not skilled at and safety wise felt most comfortable doing it ourselves with a pro instead of just doing it ourselves. And then other things that we did first, um, including that. So this was after the house already came on the scene. So let me shift to the house itself. So those are kind of like the amenities or the utilities so that we had a place to live <laughs> that was functioning by the time we got here. Um, during this time, so we moved from Houston to, to our homestead, but we had about six months where we were living in Dallas at my folks while we built on the homestead. Some friends of ours have gotten RVs and lived on their property while they built or built maybe like a, a small shop with an apartment in it. And um, we have great friends who are doing that right now as they move to a new property. So the house pad was estimated $900. This is uh, ours is on um, cinders. You can do pier and beam. You can do a flat slab, right? So there, there's always a cheaper or more expensive option. We tend to go with like cheapest best, which is, oh, we've got we've got this middle ground, but it's not like bad quality. It's just not the highest end quality. And this was always an adventure house. This was something we'd live in for three to five years. We were not planning to live here and retire. Uh, so we did some things on the cheaper side and we went with cinder block foundation on top of this house pad, which is like a crushed rock. There's like a specific detail um, name for it. And I think it's in our video about building the house and building the house pad. Um, we thought it would be 900 guys. It came out to $1,225. So we really ate it on that one. I don't know if we just did bad math beforehand or if, if prices went up. And that's a really good side note right here. Everything that I'm giving you is like 2018 prices. We're in 2023 right now. So I'm giving you like local quoted prices and actual prices out the door 
from years ago. So this might not apply and some things might even be cheaper depending on who you're working with. Um, the shell of our house itself, it's a 16 by 40, I want to say 40. To, it could be 48. Bo will come back in here and remind you. But oh, it's 16 by 48. So it was $22,000. And at the end, because we had some customizations, so we customized the wall height in our house. We customized um, the, the lofts. One of the lofts has a lower uh, floor than the other. And that was just because we knew most of our kids were going to be sleeping up there. So we customized some things and out the door, we wound up getting the shell itself with, um, no plumbing, no electric, nothing running through it, just the shell for our $24,000. So it was $24,033. And then we added in the electric, which was $33,84. We thought it would be around $3,000. Um, 2540 that was 2540 was for just the plumbing vents and the drains and here's where we can get a little more specific because the rough plumbing which is pex plumbing itself that was uh we were expecting twenty one hundred dollars but it came in under at 1775 so even in our like bulk planning of of what we would expect as an overall cost for the house then when we started breaking it down, we almost came out really close to our estimation because some things were a little bit higher and some things were a little bit under. So we got spray foam insulation. And I know that can be controversial, but you're always going to pick like you're going to pick your poison in whatever you're doing. There's always um, maybe like safer solutions, but they're going to have a different cost. So we've talked a lot about why we went with spray foam and the the general I guess, response that we have is that spray foam was the best for us to get into our house quickly and keep critters out of our house most efficiently. Out of all of the things that we read and researched about various kinds of insulation, this was the one we went with. And it came out to 4,200. We were actually expecting it to be a little cheaper at 4,000. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the square footage and where we were putting it, we also put it under the house. Uh, cost a little bit extra, but we are very sealed in and uh, we haven't had any trouble with rodents or animals getting into the house. So it's been a, I think it's been a good solution. Um, Bo did get an insulation in between the walls and I would actually recommend this. <laughs> if you guys are building your house, it's easy to like cheap out where you can cheap out, right? I don't think I would cheap out on insulation between the walls because in your tiny house, like you hear everything. So Bo put some insulation in the master bedroom, which is under our largest loft. So if you walk into our house, um, you're going to see two stairs, um, one going up to each loft in the house. And then the center of our house is very wide open. Under the right side of the lo the right loft is our bedroom. And Bo put some insulation um, up on the ceiling but not in between the walls. You guys, the bathrooms are so noisy. So I would recommend spending more than what Bo did, which was $495. Um, spend a little bit more on that insulation. This was a soundproof insulation under the loft. And we only did it on one loft. We did not do it between the bathrooms and the hallways. And I'll just say, if you don't have sound going on, like you can hear everything. And it's kind of like, not the most unfortunate thing, but it is not the most enjoyable thing. Uh, we also did drywall in the house. Folks will do lots of cheaper versions, even plywood that they seal. Like there's a lot of options when it comes down to the house. We chose drywall. It's just because I wanted the house to feel a little more um, like a house and not like a cabin. So that was $3,015. And then we had the bathrooms installed. So um, this is the, I think this is the tub the vanity, the light fixtures, the toilets, all of that wrapped up. And that was two bathrooms in our house. We have two full baths. Um, so that was $3,722. And we expected that to just be $2,300. So our actual and our budgeted has definitely switched. But if you wanted to go cheaper doing the same bathrooms that we did, you know, do different walls, do different tiles, all of those things, 
you could probably get out the door with half of what we paid. So you could probably get out of both bathrooms at just $1,500. We do have two buildings, and one of them is our shed to studio, which is where we are when we record these videos. That is a totally separate cost, um, but you can also find that information on our website. So we've got a shed to house, which we're talking about, and that's where our family of six lives full time. Um, this is where we have the two sleeping lofts. We have two bathrooms. We've got a full kitchen, um, living and entertainment space, and then tons of space on our porches. And we built this before we had known about our sponsor today. And our sponsor is United Portable Buildings. They're uh, fantastic to work with, most incredible customer service that we've had out of any company that we've ever worked with in building these two buildings. And they gave us an option to share with you. It is the shed to house configurator. So if you're sitting here thinking like, Kelly, how did you fit two bathrooms in your house? This is how you do it. You plan ahead of time. You get that full kitchen. You line up the kitchen. This is a whole other conversation we've had. Line up your kitchen before you actually build it. You set all of these things out and you create a plan. This is like kind of playing the Sims. So if you go to this shed to house configurator, you're going to be able to like switch. Where do you want the lofts? What do you want the floor plan to look like in your home? Where do you want your kitchen to be? Where do you want your bathrooms to be? Do you want a laundry room? All of these things are literally a click away as you play with the Shed to House Configurator. It's totally free. If you do want someone to get in touch with you after you build one and talk to you more about how to get one, then great, someone will do that. But if you don't, there's no pressure. No one's knocking down your door. So click on this website. It's also in our uh, link in our description below. And this is how you can mess around with uh, creating your own Shed to House before you ever actually get into it. It's from United Portable Buildings. They are sponsored for this video and they are only our sponsor because we really do enjoy working with them so much. I don't think we could shout out a company the way that we do United Portable Buildings because other than them because I've never had the customer experience and like sit down actually meet with the the CEO of the company the one who created all of it dreamed it up and they're the most fantastic people to work with just as people but then to get to work with them and offer you guys this opportunity to, to build and play around from your own computer is just so much fun. So check out that link if it's something that you guys have been thinking about, or even if you just want to mess with it and then put it in the parking lot and then come back to it later. This is how you start your shed to house life or that big land living dream. Where are you going to live? You got to know where you're going to live. So this just, this conversation about what it costs us is really just to help you see what's ahead of you as an option. And then as you build your shed to house out, then you're going to see how does that fit on the property? Where do you locate it? Where's that septic going to go? It all begins with what your house is, what that footprint is, where are you going to fit people or dogs or whatever your favorite thing to do is, you can bring it to the country in your shed to house. So did you put the link in? I just did put you the link awesome. in. I know. I kind of. You're crushing I'm get at this. And I'm taking care of children inside. You did great, babe. Okay. So we've gotten through the bathroom. Then there's trim. These are obviously things that really you can go cheapest best on these. You do not have to do exactly what we've done. Bo will say that I'm bougie and I just say that I like what I like. And you can also do that. She just so, raises the cost per square footage right, up just a right. little bit. So I think cheapest you could go with trim would be like trim our whole house for like 70 bucks. Mine was not that much more, guys. Do not give me grief in the comments. It was 127 but I got the, the thicker trim that I like throughout the house, and I think that makes me super happy. I put trim in for that much? Yes, you did. So then mini splits is probably um, like a top mm. thing you're going to think about. Either you're going to live in a place where they use heat all the time, or you're going to live in a place where you use air conditioning all the time. Sometimes you'll live in a place that just has one or the other. We live in Texas where sometimes you have both of them on in the same day. So I think I really want to emphasize the, the mini splits for this reason or the decision that we made that we probably weren't thinking of entirely. But the mini splits also help us not just with heating or cooling, but like the climate itself. So in a small space like an RV, compare your shed to house to something living small like that. Your RV, you really have to keep 
control of the humidity in that space because you don't want mold growing anywhere, especially anywhere you don't see. A shed to house is a lot like that, that you really do want to control the humidity and your mini splits offer you this option without installing a whole heat and cooling system. I also like that I don't have to have a, a big, um, what are they called? Ducts? Yeah, I don't have to have big AC heater ducts throughout my house because I just have a I have a pretty open space and well, I've got many m most people have that in their attic. We don't have an attic. Like, right, that's like true. In a, in a traditional home. Right. So in our in our home that would have taken up what I love most about our main living space which is the ship last ceilings. Ship lap, right? That's how you say it. Ship lap ceilings. I love that and it's one of the focal points in our home and it makes it feel like a house and not a shed or what many people will say, why didn't you just do a double wide? Well, because I can't have shiplap ceilings at 16 feet in a double wide. So little things that I just wanted to feel like our home in contribute to that. And I couldn't do that if I had HVAC. It would look very different in there. So we went with mini splits. We've got four heads on um, two units and they're on either end of the house. You could get a mini split installed cheaply, probably at like 500 if you were going to do them um yourself right that was not something we were that interested in <laughs> and so we did it at 1655 so 1655 for two units and that takes care of our whole um home and it it we do have mini splits upstairs and downstairs so i think that's something to note in a different home you could do it more cheaply with fewer mini splits and that would also fit into your design so in your shed to house configurator you could even look at where do i really need to put those splits so that i can appropriately heat and cool my space. We've got plumbing at 4,300 because we did not want to do any of it ourselves because I do not want to end up with poop all over my house or floors flooding from whatever thing, right? So I, I just realized, yes. did you mention at all that these are, someone's put in the, the, mm -hmm. the comments that their septic was 30 grand. So this was- Did I mention if ours- our septic cost. I'm just saying, like, did you mention that this was all pricing before yes. 2020? Yeah. So these were like our pre-COVID pricing. Things will be different now. And I'll give you some resources for the finishing out. Some things are just going to be what they are because you don't have other options in your area. Like if you live in a small rural area, you're going to have fewer people who can come install your septic, especially if you don't want to DIY it. Um, so so some of your prices are going to be, let's say you had $100,000, right? Yay. To do all that you want with your property, if your septic does cost, like someone on Facebook was saying, $30,000, then it leaves you with seventy. dollars But some of these other places that we can go to for finishings is really where you're going to save or spend the most. There are some basic things, right? So if everybody buys a shed to house shell for like $22,000, which is what we did, then we're all starting at the same baseline. What ends up being more costly or more or less costly in the end is how we finish this out. So we're about to get to that uh, details about like what we put finishing touches in the house. Um, so sorry, let's say that again. The finishing touches that we put in the house are going to tell you more about where the higher end costs came for us. So the plumbing ended up being 4,300. It could be 1,500 if you're doing a lot of the work on your own. And a lot of you guys are really capable. Like you are DIY pros. We were not. We've gained a lot of skill in the last four years. So that is good news is the sooner we could get out here, the sooner we could start learning and exercising those skills. Um, but one of the things that we put in the house was the shiplap ceiling. We did not need pros to put this in. But we did have some help, so that was good. So the shiplap ceiling runs the entire 48 feet length of the house. So before we put in lofts even, we were putting in the shiplap ceiling. Uh, it changes the shape of the house. It's something that kept the trusses exposed. Not everybody loves that, but I didn't finish out or wrap my trusses, and I felt like that was a good handoff for me. <laughs> we say like at the Brotherton house, things are like 80% done is 100% good. That's kind of how I feel. So we have the shiplap ceiling. We did not wrap the trusses. And I'm honestly really happy about the house. I ask her all the time, yeah. is this a project you want? And you're like, she's like, nope. Yeah, hard pass on that because we she's just like, don't need to yeah. spend money on it. And our shiplap, <laughs> this exposes our 80% done. So we bought prime shiplap. It's like 
kind of what you'll see if you're watching this video. Let me see. It's got mm -hmm. this little nickel. What's that called? Nickel, nickel gap. Spa nickel, nickel gap spacing. Not nickel back. No. Nickel gap. Yeah. Don't don't Google the nickel back. So it's got this uh, nickel gap spacing between its tongue and groove. It's primed in the house. And that's all. Yeah. <laughs> so it was going on the ceiling. I was like, what's the likelihood of us getting dirty fingerprints on this ceiling? That's crazy. Until you go into our children's room now and you're like, oh, no, it's one billion percent likelihood you're going to get fingerprints on the ceiling in the kid's room, just not in the main part of the house. So it took painstaking hours. This was also something that there was no video on YouTube to teach us. We just kind of went with it and we had some friends who were carpenters that said, this is how you should do it. Let's try it this way. So we put shiplap on the ceiling in the, in the, um, shed to house for $1,411. If you were doing it all by yourself and pre COVID prices, you could probably go cheapest best at like 500. So this was primed board. You guys could do this normal. You could also create your own nickel gap between your boards if you wanted to. This is all based on your skill level and even your tool access, right? Um, and then finally, we finished the electric at $1,656. Cheapest would be like $250. So big gap there, right? This was something we were not confident in doing. Again, didn't want to end up with fires and things that were a little bit riskier in our home for people not only were we like homesteading for the first time we'd only owned one house before this so and we'd only owned that for like three years i mm -hmm. think so this was like a whole new ball game for us these are the places where we spent the most um but if you are diying or if you have this skill yourself you're in great shape right so the last things i think that cost I guess if you're looking at cost and you want to save money, because that's usually the question people ask us, how can we save money? A conversation about why do we go shed to house instead of um, a double wide? This is a whole nother like live that we could chat through and get your questions on, because I think this is more of a conversation. But the finishing touches is where we spent more money, I think, than someone who's looking to go shed to house simply so they could save. When we left the city to come to the homestead, I wanted not just a lateral move. So going from like, you know, several hundred dollars in our mortgage in the city to several hundred dollars of our mortgage in the country. I wanted us to have a lower mortgage, a smaller square footage to maintain. And I wanted us to have a lot more land than we had on this little eighth of an acre lot in, in Houston suburbs, right? So when we moved here, I wanted it to feel like a house, but a smaller amount of house to clean and to make it simple. So our paint was like a Sherwin Williams, right? You could go to Home Depot and get this a lot cheaper. But we did we painted the whole house for two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, you guys could just skip the paint. You could do cheaper paint. You could do contact paper wallpaper. You could do um, board and batten. You could do uh, what's my favorite? The bead board. You guys can do so many other cheaper options for the walls in your house. Well, I mean, we talked about drywalls in there, we right? Did. We talked about Yeah, so, so I mean, you're going to paint drywall. Well, yeah, some people will just put wallpaper over drywall. Correct, correct. So I, yeah. it really I'm saying like if you didn't want it, you can go really cheap. You wouldn't do the drywall. You could just go straight Exactly, yeah. So those are the places where you can trade out like, hey, I that $30,000 septic. Where can I save? walls floors so many many cheap ways to do this so our kitchen itself we got all new appliances except for the refrigerator so um even down to our toaster oven was new because we were getting rid of things when we left the city and had no idea what we were gonna need in the country and we didn't want to pay its storage unit much longer so we went straight to getting new items like our um, dishwasher and our oven and stove Toaster oven, all of those things were new. We also put in an island in the kitchen. We did an IKEA kitchen uh, and had someone come and install it. You guys could DIY that yourself. Um, I still don't know if I would DIY it if we do it again because IKEA, like, yes, very friendly. And I love how simple and modular it is. But a whole kitchen seems a little bit complex. I do have friends that have done it but I don't know if I'm even that confident years later. So in the kitchen, we spent $6,609. Um, 
you could probably do scratch and dent. You could do a habitat restore. You could go um, just to Facebook Marketplace and find appliances and even like countertops, cabinets, all of these things, depending on what you want your experience in your shed to house to be. You can put all of these in for so much cheaper. Like I would say a thousand, around $1,000, you could finish out your entire kitchen in a shed to house because we're looking at smaller square footage here. If you're on this, you're probably not thinking like, oh my gosh, I hate the idea of a shed to house. I would never go tiny. I would never live in small square footage. That's probably not you. So if you're looking at this, know that that smaller square footage really does pay off in the end when it comes to flooring and tiling and just finishing things out. You have less square footage to cover. So you can get a lot of things um, cheaply. Maybe if you have to cover a huge square footage in tile, um, you're going to find small batches of tile, even like remnant tile, that's going to be cheaper at a store, even a big box store, than if you need a massive amount that you have to special order. Does that make sense? Like you just need that um, perspective that things are going to be smaller. Um, at the same time, we're going to have to really search out for those deals if that's what you're looking to do in the kitchen. So we use luxury vinyl plank flooring. This was because we learned that hardwood flooring is going to take a way harder hit living in the country. So this is held up phenomenally. We've had great quality with the planks itself. The install was a little rough. We would do that completely differently. And we shared about that in a lot of videos, but the install of the, the vinyl flooring in the house, um, while the install was a little rough, the housing, the flooring has really held up to our dogs and our kids and all the dirt and all the cleaning we do every single day. And that was, uh, we were expecting it to be 3000. It came out 3,700, but I think you could go for a different luxury vinyl flooring that was like somewhere around 2,500. Yeah. Just make sure you get it with the, the pad and yes. like, like don't, the um what's it called underlayment the underlay you want the underlayment in each board you don't want to have to lay it because i think with what we learned is with these houses they do shift a little mm -hmm. bit and when things kind of shift the it, interlocking mechanism you want unlocked. yeah and so yeah so we this one is doing great compared to our main yeah house. and it's really funny because Bo is smiling. If you're watching the video, he's like, uh-huh, we could have saved $1,200. Except if you also don't have a wife like Kelly, who's like, I really like that color of the flooring. How can we get that color of the and flooring? Like, in the Are house? you sure? Can we go look at a couple of more stores just to make sure? <laughs> we also had decision fatigue at this point in the project. We had decision fatigue at this point in the project because we had already decided, you know, what light fixtures go up and we were separated not um emotionally just physically i was in dallas with the kids Bo was down here making a lot of the choices so it was very straining on our relationship and we loved the idea of building a shed to house but man it took some mental fortitude to get across the finish line with each project as it came and we did this um as low debt as possible we did take on some and we talk about that in a podcast but we did this as minimal out of pocket cost as we could at a time. So some of this was done in stages. And when we put down the, we were living in the house probably for, I don't know, four or five months before we actually put down the flooring. Maybe it was three months, I think. And um, so we special ordered the like color that I wanted and that required an underlayment. I would never do that again. The complexity of like laying it down and trying to keep the underlayment flat and then putting the boards on top. It was just way more messy than it really needed to be. And I think you can do that more simply. So our appliances, this was uh, $1,222 we were expecting. Um, and it came out at $1,070. And then we didn't do anything special. I think we just waited for sales. We shopped all our appliances from big box stores. And I think that, you know, if you can wait on it, cool, wait on it. So if you use a little bit of time where you just do the like electric skillet that you plug in, we did that for quite some time um, before we even had our oven in. And I remember the first thing we cooked on it was uh, 
like French bread pizzas from Walmart. It was just one of those things where like, there's propane and electricity and all of the things in our house are coming together. So those appliances were just one of those moments, like when we got hot water here and we we're just like, this is incredible. I can't even believe it. Um, so in this same report, you're going to notice a few other things that may or may not pertain to you. We had land clearing. We expanded our road once we lived here. So instead of just giving access to our property, like I described, we um, made space so that when we had all these big trucks coming to install the propane, to bring and drop off loads and loads of wood for the deck, we had a place for them to turn around because you didn't want people just like making their own turnaround. We wanted to create a space knowing that these would be ongoing properties. Now that we're expanding builds on our house or on our property, gosh, it's going to be in year five or six. We're thankful for those spaces that we designated as come in turnaround spaces because we don't have, we ha didn't make a mark on the property where we didn't want one to be. So this way we told, we had like a controlled damage, I guess, if that makes sense. Because if you're building on raw land, you have nothing there. And that means that you could go anywhere. So you don't want people just pulling in and turning around anywhere. You want to tell them where to go. And I think that was really helpful. Between those two things, it was seven fifty to clear our land, which we have a like densely forested property. And that's actually where we put the house. We wanted something that was hidden from the road and we wanted something that we could um, like walk around in our underwear if we wanted and no one was going to notice. So we did it plop down in the middle of that forested area on our property. And that was seven fifty. And then the road expansion, which was just like a, I don't know what you call the gravel for our road. Just road base. Yeah, just road base from, I guess it's like an eighth of a mile maybe. From the front no it's probably even less than that so less than a football field we have of road on our property we might expand that in the future but that was just to get to our house building site and that was a thousand dollars so or sorry that was eighteen hundred dollars so so far we've built the whole house out we've cleared the land for right around 40 41 thousand maybe forty two thousand dollars so i'm looking at Bo to see like is that right what do you I think? That's right. So we had 39. Oh, but plus, sorry. That's a cheap so not cumulative. It. What number are we at so far? We're right there. But does that include this? I don't think so. No. Okay. I, those, so I'll those... give you a round out. Well, that's, that's the end number. Yeah. Is that the. So I'll give you a roundabout of where we are so far. It was about $14,600 for um, our first and second phases. Then we build out the house, which is about $65,000. Clearing the land and just preparing it before we put the house down was another $2,600. So then the last few things are going to be our front and back deck. That's like the same, it's more than the square footage of our house. And we use it. That's the one good thing. We use it. And if we ever want to sell the shed to house to any of you beautiful people, we will take the decks down and we could pick up the house and move it to your property. So that would be, um, we'll, we'll reuse those boards, right? That's what I keep telling Bo. I'm like, this isn't a loss. We can totally do this. But it's 12 feet deep on the front porch and the length of the house, which is 48 feet. And then 10 feet deep and the length of the house on the back porch. Um, that totals 1,056 square feet. And that is a very... Very happy number at 11,279. So the porches. That did include labor. That's in true. That. Like I, we paid uh, a contract Friends to help friend, us build, yeah, yes. Andrew Couch. So. Uh, so that was um, what? Well, there's no way you can get. The That's what I was going to say. Now. So that was like, pre-COVID prices. We, we actually have investment. In lumber right now. Like if we actually wanted to resell all of this lumber. Open up our own lumber. Yes. Store. My goodness. <laughs> okay. So that was a big thing where, where we had a, you know, big marital moment that said, are you sure you want to spend money here? And I was like, yes, give me the ship, ship lap ceilings. Give me the porches. We can do this living far away from everything we've ever known. Life. So that was our porches. Then we bought some tools because we needed 
to earn these new skills. That was about $500. We bought couches and like beds for kids and things like that. That was $622. Fencing. Which fencing did we put in? Bo's um, listed fencing here. And I feel like, what fence uh, did you I mean, put maybe in? that's the gate. Oh, maybe that's, that's true. I mean, yeah, we did put in our gate. And that was kind of one of the funniest things we did because at the first, at first when we put in our gate, it was just um, the gate. And I'm not kidding. Like, it was just the gate. You could walk around the outside of the gate. That, and we're it was like, probably for like a year or two. Over a year for sure. So maybe it just it kept cars from coming in. Maybe it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Yeah. You could you can measure your perfect by Brotherton 80%. And if the gate is in, it's okay if you don't have fence that connects it. I'm looking at these numbers and I'm like about to cry because it's so funny. To think back to what we spent money on at the beginning. We'd probably do it the same way. But it's just funny to recognize what our thought process was. When we first began this whole thing. So we also built our laundry room on the back portion of the house. So it's not, sorry, yeah, not on the house. But it's not in the house. It's on the back porch. Think my thought process behind this is loads of homes have their laundry room in their garage. Why couldn't we just do our laundry room not climate controlled. I don't really care about it. And I'd rather have two bathrooms instead of the laundry room. So back to your shed to house configurator. This is where you can mess around and play with it. Um, we put ours outside and it's not insulated, but it is inside a separate room, has a door, has a roof, all the things because our porches, I guess we didn't mention that our porches are also totally covered. So that same 48 feet for the house, is covering our porches as well. So 12 foot deep porch with a covered roof on the front, 10 foot deep porch with a covered roof on the back. But our laundry room was $633. And then um, we planted seeds and did irrigation at the beginning. That was like $200. And then while we were building, Bo stayed sometimes at a local hotel. So tell them why you had to do that at all. Uh, you mean because was that whenever I got sick and I got dehydrated? Uh, I, well, I mean, basically, we we had the building. So once before we got the building there, I, there was no place to stay. So I could mm -hmm. sleep in the car. I got dehydrated and had to get three bags of IV fluid because um, the story behind that is I could have just toughed it out in the car. Yeah. Uh, or could have went to the ER, uh, and my thought was, if I die in my car, <laughs> Kelly's going to be so mad at me because she's homeless, she's houseless right now. I was like, no, I'm going to the ER. So, um, Well, we also had like some freak weather because it was like October, it was 80 degrees one day, and then it was 40 the next day. But overnight, it was like really, really cold. Yeah. So when it would rain really hard, when it would... Um, when it would get really, really cold, Bo would go and stay at like a local. Because we didn't have insulation, yeah. but once we got insul once we got the spray foam mm -hmm. in the the shed, yeah. Then I I never I stopped. Well, once there. we got the spray foam in the shed, it was almost time for me and the kids to move in. No. Yeah. Honey, no. I was here. That was, when I got the spray foam, I was here for six weeks. Remember? Well, I guess to me that feels like almost. Well, yes. Time to it was move a six in. months. Pro it was a six six month Bill. process. But then for the last six weeks, I we were apart. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So that was $818. I feel like he could have saved on that, like slept in the car more often, don't you think? Absolutely. I'm no, kidding. no, that, yeah, I guess it was. Logic, 818. So, um, even if you keep loose records like we did, I do think it's really helpful not only to budget, but then track your your estimated cost versus what it actually cost you. And that's what we did here. So you're going to see what we budgeted, what we actually spent, and then where you could probably save more just based on what we looked at. Remember, these prices are pre-COVID prices. Since then, all the shipping delays and everything that goes on in the world changes the cost of your price. Obviously, if you live in a place that has lumber accessible and you can wait until that lumber cures, then you go right ahead. There are, there are infinite ways 
for you to save more money than what we spent on our shed to house. This is just peeling back the curtain and showing you what it looks like for someone who actually did it and isn't afraid to show you costs, right? So here are ways where I would recommend you look at um, everything from your, your building materials to your bathroom toilets. So you can look secondhand, right? Just go to your thrift stores and find, find what they've got there. You can look at scratch and dent lots. This is really great for your appliances. Like if you don't care if you get a white um, stove and oven combo instead of stainless steel, go there, do it. You're do it. Yes, that's what I say is do it. And then Habitat Restore is one place that I really thought we would visit a lot more often. It's just not easy for us to get to. So we did not go to Habitat Restore, but I would do it again in a minute if we lived in a place where it was easy for us to get to. Also, in transporting some of these things yourself, we didn't have a trailer at this time. So when we were building, uh, like if, if that's something you wanted to add into your building costs is a trailer that you could tow stuff, you could save a lot on the price that we quote here because even if you just drive to a Home Depot and pick it up, it's a lot cheaper than having them deliver. Now that said, if you can plan ahead and have one delivery of everything, for us, we would probably do that because it would save us time as well. And when you work at home and you're self-employed, your time is your income. So you may need to make more out of that. Uh, the last thing would I, I would suggest is estate sales and farm sales. I wish I had known more about those before we moved to the homestead. I would have looked for a lot more things based on those um those opportunities. It was just not something that was on my radar. So maybe that's a nugget that helps you. Yeah. So I also would say that it's definitely something, if you can spread it out, if you're in a, a certain climate, then you're going to need to to get some things mm, in, based in on check. weather. But we moved in without mm -hmm. any hot water, <laughs> yeah. without uh, any way to, to cook with propane. And without a floor, without a kitchen. We had water, electric, and septic. Cold water. In the house. Yeah. yeah. So we only had cold <laughs> water for the first like that. two or three weeks. Yeah. Then we didn't have a kitchen for the first like three months. Mm -hmm. And then. We had a makeshift kitchen, but we didn't have like yeah. our, pro like we had a refrigerator, but we didn't have an oven. Gotcha. So we just kind of made things work. That's and we what, did, yeah. I remember, I will never forget this. This is how the bonds of friendship are formed. Um, friends of ours who also YouTube the Hollers, if you haven't checked out the Holler Homestead, please do. But they came and visited us the second month we were on our homestead. And Meg and I were on our knees at my bathtub washing dishes because we didn't have uh, like proper sink in our kitchen. We didn't have our dishwasher yet. All of these things were just like memories. And she said, she said, if you've never washed your dishes in the bathtub, then, you, then you're just not, you're not homestead. a homesteader. Yeah. The whole play in homesteading just comes it full was circle. It's very fun. Um, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I would say that. Uh, I'm definitely going to put the link again so that you can download the report so that mm -hmm. you can. It's just easier to kind of have it in front of you. So download the report there and then i'm also going to put like if you're if you're interested in building a shed to house definitely go and follow the 3d shed builder so that you can design it and you can find out what's the current price yeah. today because yeah. lumber prices fluctuate all the time so i we can't tell you exactly what the price is for whatever kind of dream uh house you would want this is going to sound like a plug but it's really not it's genuinely just to see if this helps you guys is there still a promo going on with UPB. Yep. Okay. So um, 10%. that sounds very staged. It really wasn't. It's that we have six, seven children and grown ups They're living in the same the house and we're right all chatting. So, um, so a couple months ago, United Portable Buildings let us know that they were doing a, a sale on their shells. If you are in the shipping area of UPB, you can get these. I think it's 10%. Yep. So there's a 10% off sale. It's kind of like if you've been on the fence, at least fill out the shed configurator and really take a, a, a look at, is this the best choice for us at the best time? That's all I'll say about it. But I hate it when people don't tell me about sales. So there you go. Um, what other questions? Should we just answer some questions? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think we have maybe five minutes or so to, yes, to run before through. Before babies start shouting. Yeah. Okay. 
And you guys might not. Why don't might. you handle the questions? You guys, I'm, is it Kelly? Give Kelly a big woohoo that she's rocked it out. It's I'm like gonna go I get check. to chat with you guys. I know. Even though, I know. <laughs> even though no one interrupted me for 30 minutes. That's amazing. And she's so good. Um, also, I would say if you have specific questions, some people are, will just email and say, like, hey, I really want to do the Shed to House thing. Um, will you consult with us? We are still working on course creation and some other things right now. So our time to consult isn't um, isn't abundant at the moment, right? We're at the beginning of 2023. But if you want to email specific questions, we can usually get back to your email within a day or two. Our purpose for sharing Shed to House is that we would help people find affordable alternative living. And I know like like I'm saying, you don't have to build this out the way that we did, but I wish that we had someone who had done a shed to house and shared it publicly the way that we do. So these are some resources that I think could be helpful for you. Not only the configurator, but we have the shed to house Facebook group. There are so many people like more than 80,000. We might be at a hundred thousand people in that group who either have lived in a, a building that they've converted into a home or they are dreaming of that thing. And you can get so much from that community. Um, if you are, oh, Bo brought a baby. You can get so much from that Shed to House Facebook community that will help fuel your ideas for building a Shed to House, or that will um, help you just make decisions about what is best for you and your family, or even the timing of building your Shed to House. So. Um, the Shed to House Facebook group, and then email us. And we have a, a course about getting off your tail and homesteading. That might not be where you're at, but if you are, go to the website. You can check that out too. And we're available via email because I feel like sometimes you can get on the internet and it just feels like you're comparing yourself to everyone, but we really would rather help you like weed through those ideas. Yeah. And, yes. And take that first step. Uh, because you're not doing anything until you do take that first step. You're really just creating ideas and sort of storing them up. Uh, but once you begin to take those steps toward actualizing those ideas, then you're, oh, did you see yourself? Um, then uh, you really do feel like, okay, I, I just need someone to walk alongside me. So that's what we're here to do. I just think we wish that we had someone doing this when we began. I know I'm, now I'm starting to repeat myself. So anyhow, before we keep going on, check out these resources. I hope they're helpful to you. And you guys can always email us with questions, um, specific ones that we would be happy to point you in the right direction if we know the answer. Sorry, I'm trying to find the course wait list. That's okay. That might not be what we need. I know you want to get that, Michael. They were. Okay. Do we... Were they scroll? off the walls? Um, yeah. Beverly just finished her conversion. That's awesome, Beverly. Five weeks. Way to go. Okay, I'm going to put the wait list for the course. We're, we're talking about, I know that we're a little bit late launching the course again, but join the wait list so that you can get the early bird pricing again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want me to keep on going? No, I think we're good. You got, you got all them all? Yeah. Awesome. The baby. Okay, guys, thanks for joining us live. We're going to try and bring this to you a couple times a month and hopefully during the daytime hours. So if you're watching this replay, you can email us questions that you want us to cover on these um, or we can chat live right here. So thanks for joining us. I know your time is super valuable. That baby's missing one sock. We'll see you guys soon.